What's the best thing a competing channel has copied from you? Competing channels cannot copy anything. They get they try to copy and then they get it all wrong. Yeah. First thing that struck uh, you about India when you got off the plane? It's a lot more hot and humid than it is in San Francisco. One personality you really want to interview? Sonia Gandhi. One celebrity you hope uh, will never leave Twitter? We love them all and we hope they all stay. What does the nation really want to know? The nation wants to know why I don't take a long break and give people a break for a longer time. <laughs> uh, was the dress blue and black or uh, gold and white? Blue and black. Easy. Dash is the secret to your energy. News is the secret to my energy. One Indian who could break Twitter? <laughs> oh no, if he gets on. Three things people don't know about Arnav Goswami. I am a complete hypochondriac and uh, I am very forgetful. The third thing is something I've forgotten. Uh, Twitter handle that you compulsively follow? Well, I follow a lot of them compulsively. How many hours of sleep do you get on a weeknight? Six hours, and that's good enough. Which actor would uh, best play Dick Costolo in a biopic? <laughs> I'll stay local and go and uh, set my sights high and go with Shah Rukh Khan. Guns N' Roses or Pink Floyd? Guns N' Roses and a song called Patience. One thing you're looking forward to doing in India? Uh, this is my first time in India, so all of it is new and exciting for me. Will Arnab Goswami ever write a no holds barred tell-all book? Yes, one no holds barred tell-all book, which I'll start writing six months before I retire and then it will be a global bestseller, I hope. One person you'd like to see on Twitter? Uh, uh, again, our, our host today. I'm going to be, look, when, as, soon as, I, as soon as I talk to him, I'm going to I'm going to ask him the three reasons he's not on the platform and see if we can change that. Do you watch your own parodies? Yes, I watch a few of my parodies and I must say they're very good. But I'm the original parody. <laughs> hey, Dave, hey, how are you? Very nice or to no, meet nice you. Nice to meet yes, you. Yes, thanks you for doing? having me. I'm how was your flight? My flight was long, yeah? very long. First time in India, is it? First time in India, yeah, first time ever. Yeah? Yeah. It's hot. <laughs> it's hot and humid. So, you know, we, we, we have very uh, open questioning on the program I do. Are you good. open for... I'm open. Free round of questions. Asking free round. No uh, censorship. No censorship. Anything you can come at me from all different sides. Now you'll regret that. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to regret that. Okay. So, so let me ask you, uh, Dick. You know, what is the one question you hope you are not going to be asked today? Who's going to win the Cricket World Cup? Because I'm <laughs> only just now. I'm I'm fascinated by the sport and I'm learning it, but I don't understand it well enough to even remotely figure out or predict who's it's, going it's to win. It's very very big. <laughs> it's, it's really big and it's becoming so big out here in India now. So what's been your true calling? Let me get to know you a little bit more, Dick. Uh, you were in theatre. You were yeah. an improv of theatre. Yeah, I was. Do you like that years. more or like being Twitter boss more? <laughs> I think I like them both. I yeah? like them both. Were the, Twitter, the, uh, the Twitter CEO role is a lot more fun now. I wasn't making very much money yeah. doing improv comedy. Now I have a question <laughs> for you. You yeah, have to tell me. Ahead. Give me a couple reasons like you're <laughs> okay. not already on Twitter. Yeah. Why am I not on Twitter? I'm scared of Twitter. <laughs> Don't be scared. Come on in. I'm the water is the water's nice and warm. I'm a private person. <laughs> I'm a private person too. But you can, you know, you can join. There's already a great deal of conversation that you motivate and inspire <laughs> on Twitter. I'm aware of so that. So you should jump in. <laughs> what if it all becomes negative and I get psyched? It won't by become it. negative and negative. People love you. Yeah? Yeah. Thank you. That's the biggest <laughs> brand endorsement I've got, Dick. I like you. I uh, like you very much. And so I have another question. Do you get for to you? ask more questions? Yeah, okay. I have one more for you. You have to tell us the story behind the, the nation wants to know. Nation wants to know. <laughs> I thought that was my line. Uh, really? <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know really, but I, it's really caught on. But tell you, Dick, I rarely used it. Now here's the story. I've never told anyone about it. So in 2010, we were exposing a lot of scams, and I was going after a lot of politicians, and many of them just hated it. I went into this banquet in <laughs> Delhi once where a group of ministers were sitting around a table. And Dick, right. I've never spoken about this before. So sit around a table. As I was walking towards them, very sarcastically, they look at me and they say, so what does the nation want to know today? Because they presume that I believe I'm asking questions on behalf of the nation. Right. So it's an amazing moment where those politicians were asking me that question. And somehow it stayed in my mind. And that's it. It became so, the thing. So, so uh, most unfortunately, it was a politician who coined the phrase. <laughs> Yeah, I can, see why you, I can see why it's the first time you've told that story, because uh, it's the politician that coined the phrase, but it's now what everyone associates with absolutely. the line. Well, Dick, I'm I don't really, have a line. Yeah? I should get one, I think. 
Okay. You can give me a line maybe later. By on. the end of our chat, right. I'll give you a line. Perfect. That's the deal. That's nice the deal. to meet you. Let's nice go. We've got too. five nice people waiting there to have a conversation. I'm really looking forward to Fantastic. this. Fantastic. Thank too. you for doing this. Thank you. Thank you for making the time. Great. Let's go. Of course. Okay. Let's go. Uh, I am a byproduct of Twitter. My whole career uh, exists because of Twitter. So meeting the Twitter CEO, it's it's like meeting your boss. Plus, uh, you know, as a comedian, I'm naturally a big fan of Arnab Goswami, who also gives us a lot of material. I plan to touch Arnab's feet for giving me so many jokes over the years. Uh, and I think I, I'm looking forward to a very interesting discussion about Twitter and what what the CEO himself thinks of the future of Twitter uh, and what it holds in store for us. So. I'm excited. He is the CEO of one of the biggest social media websites in the world. Breaking news is first on Twitter than anything else before. So I think that just just as a medium, it's really opened up a whole new generation of people who are just used to consuming news online. That's really impacted the way we look at language and also impacted the way we consume news. So just want to see, you know, like, where this is going now, like I want to know what in Dick Costello's mind is, uh, you know, the thing that is going to impact our future news. I'm the proper, like, hardcore geek with a very minimal sense of humor. So I'm probably going to be talking about, you know, governmental interaction, corporate interaction, feedback policies, the role of public and public policy formation and social media plays in it. So I'm expecting 45 seconds out of an hour for something as boring as that. But let's see if I can make the best of that. So as Dick Costello is concerned, where do we see the youth in India uh, in you know rising amongst the ranks of people in the global sentiment as far as creating a movements is concerned? Do you think India is the next big movement? I'm completely obsessed with Twitter. It's the first thing I check when I wake up in the morning, last thing I check before bed. basically in a relationship with Twitter, it's very sad. Um, so it's really exciting to meet someone behind the scenes, you know, who's actually making the decisions that impact my life on a day-to-day -day basis. So I'm very, very excited. I'm looking forward to it. I think, you know, India is such an interestingly polarized and diverse country, and that's very obvious in the Indian internet. Um, and my experience specifically has been, you know, I've had a lot of, I've met a lot of interesting people through the internet, um, but also a lot of negativity is bred on Twitter. Um, so I'd love to sort of broach that subject if at all and I need to ask Arnab why he isn't on Twitter because we have so much fun <laughs> talking about Arnab Goswami on Twitter and the fact that he isn't there to join in is very sad. If you really wanted to create a revolution, the place to do it is Twitter. If you really want to have a conversation with like-minded people, the place to do it is Twitter. And, and so I was like extremely keen to ask them a lot of questions about saying, so what made you do it and how you're doing here? And a lot of curiosity, uh, a little bit of appreciation, and honestly, a lot of love for the medium. The thing I want to tell Arnab is that I know he's great on times now in the debates, but I'd love to see what he does in 140 characters. <laughs> but, but even otherwise, I, I think, I think um, you know, Arnab has this habit of getting to the crux of the issue. And today he's told us to have fun, which is just wonderful. I mean, to know that we can all have fun, uh, and, and maybe, maybe you know, it's just freewheel a little about what social media is, what reporting is, what news is online in the digital age. Would be really nice to know and to know his views would be even more fun. This is Dick Costolo, he's a global CEO of Twitter, and he's a man of many parts, including he's done theater at a very professional level. Now he's the global CEO of Twitter. So great to have you, Dick. At a professional level, but not professional myself <laughs> during the actual performing. So what about Twitter? Is that at a professional or unprofessional that Twitter level? Is, Twitter is in a much more professional level. And, and Dick has told me that I can ask anything I want, which I told him by the end of the show he will regret. <laughs> Yeah, nine hours from now, I'll be like, hey, I really gotta get some sleep. <laughs> okay, so Dick, let me introduce you. Right in front of you, this young man, Tanmay. He's one of India's youngest, most renowned stand-up comedians. He is, has a, he's co-founder of a comedy group, comedy sketch group called AIB, yeah. which has more than one million followers, subscribers of its own. So, Tanmay, 
Great. Thank you for making the time. Thank you. Tanmay is right as Roshan Abbas. He has many talents, one of which was that he was my senior in college. <laughs> <laughs> and I survived. <laughs> India's first radio job. How ancient does that make him feel? <laughs> first? In private life. So, so in, life. in private radio, one of the first. He's and I did one of the first dial-in shows that happened. When we didn't have any delay time, so I had to take calls dead live. So it was one of those things where whatever happened just happened. Then I survived. So, <laughs> so he's a writer, director, theatre personality, film personality. He's founded a company called Encompass, which is a creative event agency. Roshan, thanks for coming. Not at all, pleasure. Thank you very much for coming. I just met Sharon. She runs Mumbai's culture hub and co-working space called The Hive and pop culture and politics website popsplat.in. Very active on Twitter. Joined it in 2009. Perfect. Welcome, Sharon. Nice to meet you. Nice, nice to meet, to meet you, you too. And to, to her right is Anmol and Anmol Soin. He's the managing director of the initiative. He's got a very serious Profile. biodata <laughs> CV. Very serious CV. I, yes, very serious. I can't wait to hear, what, <coughs> wait to hear what's about to happen. He's, he was a consultant <laughs> to the 14th Finance Commission Government of India. Oh, wow. wow. Right? Can, Should can I? No, I have a choice here. I have a, cho I have a choice <laughs> for Anmol. I can either read out his formal CV or his Twitter handle description. Which would you like? I want to hear his formal CV, Ryan, first. Bad I think you should do them. Bad. I think you should do them both. Do one and then the other. We'll okay, so he's managing director of the Initiative for Policy Research. He's been consultant to the Finance Commission Government of India. Uh, he's serious. worked as editor for EIR, which is the world's leading website for students and scholars of international relations. Now I'll go to the Twitter one. Yeah. yeah. He Let's says he's overeducated, underworked, <laughs> football enthusiast, and diet coke addict. That's much better. Huh? Yeah, he says, come, love, let's listen to Coldplay. <laughs> I have my things. <laughs> Anmol. Better now on national television. Thank you, Anmol. Are you dressed appropriately with your CV? Maybe you should... <laughs> Nehru jacket hanging on the back of my chair. <laughs> I will bring this out if I have to. <laughs> Thank you, Anmol. And that's Rega Jha to your left. She's the editor of BuzzFeed India. Uh, nice she's worked for BuzzFeed in New York in the past. She's from Columbia University. She's interned at Rolling Stone, Vogue, and The New Yorker. These guys are going to pull my leg throughout the show. Just take <laughs> Okay, so Dick, thank you. I'll just start the conversation. We're having a conversation around the table, yeah. and I will do something I never do. Uh -oh. I'm going to listen. Because <laughs> <laughs> of this, somebody <laughs> tweeted right now. Unless, <laughs> unless somebody right on now. the program decides to join politics, in which case I change my mind. So my I throw my first question at you, and you guys can take it further from there. So, I think uh, you're here five years into your CEO ship. Dick. Yeah. Why have you not come before? Four or five years? Four and some into my CEO ship. Uh, well, there are a lot of countries in the world, and there are a lot of offices in the United States, and, uh, and I can only be in so many of them at one time. I'll tell you, the fascinating thing about travel as a CEO is when you're not in the headquarters building, you want to be more in touch with what's going on in, in headquarters, and then, of course, um, the people in local offices and distributed offices around the world want you to be there, too, so you've really got to fight this balance between going out and seeing everybody and seeing all your users because we are such an international country and wanting to be in the center of where we're doing all the, most of the work on the product and, and headquarters. So it's a real balance I have to strike. Yeah, but they'll, have, they'll want to take this forward. Why don't any of you take it forward? Why is India important from a, from a Twitter perspective? Well, why are you here? I asked you the question, why haven't you come? And why are you here now? Yeah, the reason I'm here now is, um, look, that India is demographically the youngest you know, the youngest country in the world. More people under 25 than anywhere else in the world. And you can see, because um, on Twitter, uh, it's one of our fastest growing populations in the world. It's one of the countries in which we're innovating on the product more than anywhere else in the world with our acquisition of ZipDial, which was a, an Indian company, the first company outside, uh, outside the US and Europe that we acquired. So there's so much activity happening in and around the platform uh, in India, that it was important for me to get over here and you see what it's all about. Do you uh, have you uh, realized the impact Twitter has had on uh, mainstream in, mainstream media in India? Like, I, I don't know if you guys are aware of it. Yeah, we we are. We have a, we actually have a, a hashtag wall at our main commons in the in in San Francisco, uh, where we where we um, the big room where we have our all hands meetings, and we had um, the first uh, uh, the first of, of two uh, uh, global hashtags that were non-US hashtags were up on the wall uh, just the other day. And it was the first Hindi hashtag we had up there around the quick Cricket World Cup. But before that, um, as I mentioned uh, uh, to several people earlier in the day today, the uh, India with Pakistan that happened in the uh, aftermath of the Peshawar uh, event in mid-December was, was 
uh, evident to all of us in San Francisco, and we talked about it at our all hands meetings, and that's what's so great about the platform. I remember, I remember a, a, couple, a couple of years ago when it was Twitter in India was still a very small community. It was almost like, uh, it, like it was for the social elite, almost if I may put say so. If you may, uh, push, yeah, yeah. If, may if you may put yourself in the social elite. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I remember at that point. <laughs> I remember at that point, uh, on the worldwide trends, there was nothing that had originated from India. I remember somebody started, uh, uh, old Indian ads was the hashtag. Yeah. I remember everyone just piled on at, uh, at this point. Classic Indian ads. Was, uh, at the, everyone just piled on and we made it to number one on the worldwide trends. And that's when we all were like, oh my God, the whole world now knows that India exists. <laughs> so I remember it was, yes. at that point it and was really... Decided- Advertisement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, but that was that was before news hour started using the hashtags. I must clarify. Yeah, but uh, you know, this zip dial acquisition that you've done, I'm, I'm interested in knowing. And, I mean, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm going to put a business question here, but yeah. it's like, uh, is, is that is that purely because of the fact that, uh, I mean, zip dial is almost like a callback service which you can use or utilize. Is it because of the limited reach that you felt uh, within what Tanmay just said is the social elite? I mean, I'm not saying it's a social elite. But if it's a smartphone population, are you trying to yeah. reach beyond that and get more numbers? Is that it? It's, I would say that it's more about the, the way we saw people using Twitter and other uh, platforms in India uh, became a way that we started seeing other people try to use these kinds of platforms outside of India as well on non-smartphone devices. So we decided that the acquisition of ZipDial would help us both reach beyond the smartphone and uh, teach us the things that were working in India that we could deploy elsewhere in the world. I'm sorry, for the uninitiated, could you tell us what ZipDial actually does? Yeah, they do uh, like uh, callback. Uh, callback services and uh, and SMS um, SMS. Uh, oh, so so these services through services. Twitter? That's correct. So now we'll be integrating them into our core platform and integrating those kinds of callback services in this yeah. call so service. So we'll be able to take the universe you, to a much larger you, size and even to non-smartphones. Yeah. Got it. So it just, I mean, it, and that's the big move. So I mean, it's like a fantastic, when it happened, everybody was like, yeah. wow. Yeah. What else can I tell you about your country? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'll behave myself. You asked it's for the it. coffee. <laughs> it's got sugar in it. Yeah. It's giving me a buzz. So, you know, I think what Twitter does in India, what social media does in India is that it breaks the boundaries between people. It helps you reach out to people. So it helps you reach out to an Amitabh Bachchan, right? Or another film star, or even a politician. And it helps you bring a connect. We are, we are the world's largest democracy, so the large country. And I, I don't know if you agree with it, but I don't know what you think about it, Sharon. I think what, what social media basically does in India is that it helps people reach out directly, breaking through yeah. several layers of bureaucracy. Because in our life, we have, there are so many things which are holding people back from direct connect. Mm. Right? And I think that's what it does. What do you think? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I mean, I started my career as an entertainment journalist, you know, and whereas in the beginning we had to go and stand out people's, you know, like all celebrities' homes and stuff. Uh, Twitter just became such a malleable medium because you know here you had these range of celebrities and I'm not I'm not just talking about my generation like the generation of uh, Amitabh Bachchan who would be in his late 60s you know they are tweeting really actively and they're archiving their tweets and they're archiving their information which is so useful for many of us and uh, one thing I think uh, Twitter has done really effectively is put a humanity to the celebrity. Because otherwise they were all so unapproachable, like these facades that you can't touch. And this is where they become reachable. So was one that one of the things that uh, Twitter had in mind as well when the medium was becoming more and more popular, especially with celebrities? I think the first thing that you both mentioned, we have thought consciously about the ability to communicate to anyone, to reach across the world to anyone and communicate without barriers. And Twitter has eradicated all sorts of communication barriers geopolitical barriers, socioeconomic status barriers. Um, But what we didn't anticipate was what you just said, that when you enable that direct connection, you start to see a three-dimensional view of these people who you previously only saw in two dimensions. What do you mean three-dimensional? Well, you see these sports stars who know about literature and music and Mm. they talk about what they're reading and you've only ever seen them interviewed after the match and you know how'd it go today well we had a good game today you know and and so they don't get a chance to talk about everything else that's going on as someone who grew up middle class in india uh, now i have access to movie stars like i can message them directly so you kind of 
Yeah, all the time, all the time. Like I was DMing Anushka Sharma yesterday, and I don't have to go through a manager, her agent. It's her. It's but that's her. because you're a celebrity. I'm. I'm not. Uh, <laughs> that's true. That's true. No, no. My my question here is, I think you know, it's all very good. Why? Becoming, becoming huh? competition for Virat Kohli. You know? <laughs> I don't know. The the, the the question here is the question. The other, you know, but 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 you know, Anmol, the other side of it is that a celebrity cringes when they get negative feedback. And you know, we another thing I think which, which I would like to get uh, you know Dick also to comment on, is that when people reach out, it's all not always nice. And one of the negatives about it is that 70% of the time people are reaching out also to, you know, to say something negative. Is it becoming a negative medium also in that well, sense? You know? Any medium will have its share of people who use it and abuse it, and people who are generally intolerant or nasty or not nice. And there's negative opinions floating pretty much everywhere you go. First, you got angry letters 30 years ago. Then you started getting really bad feedback mails and yeah. you know books with writings yeah. on it. The, dis the, the destruction of barriers lets celebrities and politicians and yeah, personalities get feedback, but it's good, like in a weird. But way. some of them cringe, you know. Like the same celebrity, for mm -hmm. example, or the same film star. Rega, I don't know your experience in India. Same film star who gets onto Twitter or social media to promote a film. Yeah. yeah. Right. Tomorrow, if they get negative feedback, they'll get off it. I think it's I so think that wh what explains that? Are people sensitive or what? Uh, I think there's a fine line between feedback and abuse and harassment. Um, mm. And I think right. once that line is crossed, no matter how rich or famous or wow. successful you are, you will be. Who affected. decides that line? I think you do, and everyone's behavior does, right? Um, once it go, once it stops being about your work and just becomes personal attacks, becomes threats, becomes violent abuse. Um, at that point, I think any celebrity is entitled to feel hurt. And mm. to you know associate some negativity with the platform, although it isn't Twitter's fault. And Mo is totally right. You know, this is yeah. just human nature. Mm. Um, certain people, we lots claw, of people, once you're given access, yeah. we, what? we claw at people who are. Sometimes what do you mean, we? All we as in humanity, humanity, in general. We I mean, think it's, it's you. It's <laughs> we, not us. We are all nice people. We have never been media people, media right? yeah. Really? But I, think, I think it's a combination of <laughs> combination of anonymity, ease, and the fact that you know that someone is going to read it at the other end of yes. of the phone. No, but but let me put it differently to him, and then I'll come back mm -hmm. to you on that. You see. Uh, should someone like Dick or Twitter take the responsibility of deciding, you know, how far is too far? Or is that left no, to the see, person? Or are we entering a medium where you say, not just Twitter, any social see, media, Twitter is you a enter medium. it with Twitter, risks Twitter attached? Is, Twitter does not have, I mean, I don't think that they're exercising editorial control, uh, you know, to, to the degree they, they would, they, they are obviously looking out for things which, which could create issues or whatever, but they're not actively trying to control it. They're a medium. They're, they're a, there are consumers on one side, there are creators on the other, and they're conversations. What happens is, so I mean, my point to this whole Bollywood issue is, Bollywood just wants to hear good news. Yeah. So the problem is not that. It's not, I mean, you know, you could just turn and say, film that sucked. You know, I got bad reviews for my film, I was absolutely okay. I wrote back saying, it's absolutely fine, I'll make a better one next time. But if I suddenly want to go into this shell of saying only 30 people will tell me I good things about life, that's the problem. So I think it's, it's instant feedback, it's true. Yeah. And you've got to, if to, in today's day and age, with these mediums, you don't accept the truth. Yeah, I just think that it's it's a lot of truth. But, which but is, Dick, which is the conversation any different in the in the U.S. for example, or globally from what you're hearing around the table? It's the same conversation. The same? I think that the point you just made, that um, the distinction between feedback and abuse is an important one, and one of the things we're spending a lot of time on, and we've already rolled out a bunch. We have a lot more coming. Is to put more tools into the hands of users yeah. to allow them to, you know, mute and uh, and not have to see abuse, abuse yeah. harassment, or repeated tweets just saying the same thing over and over and over again that become personal. It should be easy for you to be able to use the platform without seeing that kind of stuff and we're building a You're lot You're working of tools. on it? Yeah, we're not only working on that, we've already started rolling those out and we'll make it easier and easier for people to deal with that. In my experience, you know, whenever someone has really crossed the line, said something really nasty or explicit, hmm. um, people I don't know, strangers have jumped in to report that person. Um, so yeah. whether or not Twitter is taking initiative, I'm taking initiative. There are strangers That's on the right. internet who are kind. That's right. Um, yeah. The other interesting thing that happens is, to, to that precise point, is there will be times when, because the community generally rallies around these kinds of things, that someone who's a victim of initial abuse on Twitter or any other platform sees an almost overwhelming after-effect response from people rallying to support them. And that's you see that for... Uh, individuals and for entire movements, and yeah. that's you know that's really rewarding. I don't know if you are aware of the way in which Twitter has actually contributed to the kind of the discussions that we have had in India, especially around politics and social issues. I'd yeah. like to talk a little bit about that from my own experience, and 
you know, I'm not on Twitter, but I very closely follow. You have to follow. stop saying that. Yeah. We're gonna get, we're gonna fix that. We're gonna we're gonna resolve that At, before we leave. Huh? You're, you're <laughs> gonna put pressure on me. Uh, yeah. You're so welcome. I'm, Please try. It's no I pressure. Hear that? Because after every show, I would tweet to the news, ask, saying, "Oh my yeah. God, Arnav, you're looking so lovely today." Yeah. <laughs> I'm heartbroken. I know. Know. It's not you reading it. It's not getting through. It's not getting through to him. The jeans are amazing, Arnav. They'll never know. They'll never know. Oh God. But you know, one of the reasons I I get distracted. The reason I am not on Twitter personally is because I'll have to leave my phone behind when I'm doing the show. This is a straight answer. And if I leave my phone behind, sometimes I get breaking news. So I have a choice. I either follow the news or I follow the comments. But the real news is breaking on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Twitter. That's actually one of the things I want to ask yeah, you, actually. Did really you ever imagine that that uh, uh, Osama, like the Bin Laden incident would have broken yeah. on Twitter? Exactly. exactly. Did you ever imagine that like something, someone would live tweet uh, Navy SEAL versus Bin Laden? Uh, we, we never envisioned so many of the things that have ended up happening on the platform <laughs> like that. Never. I remember uh, just before I started in 2009, um, at the time, the company still had to do planned maintenance on the servers every night and take them down and do maintenance. And uh, the State Department, the U.S. State Department, called the company uh, because the protests in Iran were happening. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, the founders of the company, Biz and Evan Jack, still talk about the fact that you know the State Department called the company, and Biz was on the phone and saying, "How do I know this is really the State Department? No one's ever called us from the government before. Ever since then, it's just been one thing after another." But you know, the best thing about Twitter as a news source, I mean, as a journalist, I can tell you is that the first point of reference is very often becoming Twitter because of the fact that uh, Twitter is real time. Yeah, that's right. right? Yeah. So where it works is that, you know, the first comment on a live program. Uh, so even if you have to attach a YouTube link or something else, you do it via yeah. Twitter. So yeah. Twitter become, and also Twitter since, I don't know, most of most people use it on their mobile phone. So you carry it as you go. I find it very interesting. I don't know your views on it as consumers of news. As a person who practices news, I feel that the best thing about Twitter is that you get a real-time analysis of stuff that's coming in. You also get to understand how people are responding to you, so you need not get influenced by it. But as a source of news, it's quite good. I mean, you know, I, it's, you, know it, it, you may not rely on it. You can't, it can't be the, it's like you can't take something of Wikipedia and say it's probably right. But at the same time, you can't disregard it either. You know Wait, what? what? You can't take something off Wikipedia and say it's probably. That's what I think. You enjoyed that, I thought. I did enjoy that. Huh? The, only, the, only, the, only, the only issue, and in fact, something that, that I, I thought I would, I would uh, ask about is the fact of saying that, you know, when, so, when somebody puts out that first piece of, piece of information, mm -hmm. how does it get verified? I've actually had an incident where a friend of mine uh, was just driving down uh, the C-Link and suddenly got a message saying, Oh, you know, uh, one of the wires has snapped. It, as a good Samaritan, he tweeted it out, and he was called the next day by the police saying, "You started, uh, you know, a rumor." Mm. Now the issue is, he said, "I heard it from someone, and I put it out there." How do we? I mean, I, I just think there's a big issue about saying, "How do you verify it?" Because honestly, I now find that a lot of political people who are online who are trying to influence or create certain uh, views or Opinion, viewpoints, right. you know, and, and, they, and, it, and if 100 people do it, Sunday there is this Wednesday to Sunday start believing maybe it's true. So the that's the one thing I don't know how does yeah. one handle it. Well, the beauty of the platform, as you said earlier, in, in, even before Twitter, in the wake of some breaking news, there's always been rumor and rumors spread about Absolutely. what happened. And I remember in the U.S. in the wake of the Oklahoma City bombings many years ago before yeah. Twitter, the first day was, oh, they're looking for seven people that look like this in, a, yeah. in a, this kind yeah. of a car. And then three days later, like, it was completely, you know, com yeah. no, that was completely In false. Fact, what Twitter does here is it gives you a recorded medium. Because what right. was earlier, word of mouth is now text to screen. And you realize that, A, you get to trace who started the rumor, yeah, if it's exactly right. Rumor. B, you get to actually see how the rumor evolves. Yeah. And this is not just serious journalism. From, right from football transfers to the Boston bombings, you get to see how yeah. things trans That's transgress right. and, and you evolve. you get to see how quickly the crowd corrects them. Yeah, I've, I've, I've heard of three yeah. celebrities who are our favorite celebrities saying they just passed away. And then suddenly after 10 minutes, it's like... Oh, that oh, happens that every six months. months. Yeah, can you imagine? Twitter is every every yeah. like yeah. very much alive. <laughs> Mr. Yeah. Butcher, yeah. Yeah. what? <laughs> and then after about half an hour, I think, no, oh, it, it's just somebody was visiting the hospital. It's, it's yeah, but it just sort of neutralizes itself also, right? I think so. I, th I think it yeah. does, but I'm just... My only worry is the fact of saying, if you can verify accounts, can someone sit there and verify news? You know, I have a big problem things. with Twitter and social media and that. Uh -oh. <laughs>
my no, problem is with all my Why are you looking at me with that? Like I just got off a plane. I'm trying to... Arnab you know, has a problem. <laughs> Hold your breath. <laughs> Enjoy yourself. <laughs> Enjoy yourself. <laughs> Enjoy yourself. While it lasts, Roshan. I must tell you, Dick, but I must tell you, I've got to thank you for the fact that this is the maximum conversation that's happened in a show with Arnab. <laughs> By anyone apart from Arnab tonight. I, I assure you of that. It's been yeah. My, problem is not Twitter. Twitter. My problem with Twitter, I will continue regardless of that. My, my, problem, my, my problem is with the way people are writing English. The way people oh. are writing. <laughs> I have to tell you, okay, I didn't so think let, that let was me ask you. Even grammar not good. Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, no, no, no. I, you see, ev everything is an expression. Yeah. Everything is a group. Yeah. Uh, okay. For example, if someone were to say, "I like you a lot," yeah. Why does it have to be hashtag I like you a lot? Everything is a hashtag. Oh my God. In fact, I am told, I am told that one of your competitors have also picked up hashtags now. And, and you, you know, Times Now is the leading generator of hashtags <laughs> on Twitter. <laughs> no, no, that's got nothing to do with it. <laughs> we, we are beyond scrutiny if you haven't realized. <laughs> no, but you know, it's it's actually okay. Now let me put that so seriously, Tanmay. As, a, as a, you know, sociologically, aren't people talking differently now? They are. I mean, yeah. They, yeah. It, it's it, you know, but language always evolves. Yeah, I mean, language evolves, exactly. and. On uh, digitally, language is evolving. I think that's great. Yeah, like if Arnab were to be on Twitter, everything would be in caps lock. <laughs> so, 140 characters, and that is why Arnab's not on Twitter. Actually, actually, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying very fiercely to moderate this discussion. <laughs> Dick, I want to ask you a question. As someone who's my like my entire career has been made uh, on, practically on Twitter. I, I started off with 30 followers, and now I have half a million. Right? My worry is, my worry, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. <laughs> My worry is, I, I look at what's happening on YouTube and Facebook, for example, right? My worry is corporate greed. Like, YouTube has now changed its advertising policies, right? Like, as someone who's building a brand online, like, my only source of income is through advertising, through through a promotion on, on the social media platform. Uh, you can see the greed from YouTube who have changed their policies, and I'm slowly now seeing Facebook changing them. My biggest worry is tomorrow, Twitter will crack down on brands and go like, we're going to start charging you for tweeting and for broadcasting your messages. And, my, uh, and I don't know what yeah, situation... That's not going to happen. It's, it's going to be that we're doing the, the things we've been doing today where you organically reach all of your followers by, you know, you build up a following and you tweet to them and you reach them. That's not going to change. So at, at no point is, is it on your radar to start charging? I mean... Yeah, I'm saying that we're not going to charge you to tweet to your followers. You have no plans of... Of monetizing. You've asked me that three times, as if you don't believe me. No, because I just I wanted to be on record. Why I'm, on, so why I'm already on record three times. <laughs> but but, but you guys, why don't you just switch seats? But no, Dick, tell me. <laughs> Dick, tell me. Okay, say you the nation see, wants to know. The nation say wants it. to know. <laughs> He's completely taken no. over now. The nation wants to know. <laughs> Is Twitter going to monetize? Broadcasting of messages by brands. Oh God! <laughs> I can find okay. you another job. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so no, happy. listen. Um, you know, the nation wants to know. <laughs> the nation, the nation wants to know. Hashtag, hashtag, hashtag. The nation How wants to know. are you insecure? I said, not you, not you, <laughs> not you, not you, Twitter. Because what happens yeah, is, I if somebody was to tell me, if somebody was to tell me, which they tell me all the time, that overnight you'll become redundant, mm -hmm. I'd be very insecure. Mm -hmm. What about Twitter? You're technology driven, right? You say you're a technology driven company yeah. in the media business. That's correct. Technology is like a tsunami. Yeah, Dick, you're a technology guy. Yeah. Every day. If, yeah. if I was in your position, you built, and the bigger you go, you built four companies yourself in mm -hmm. the past, the bigger you go, the greater the tsunami which can take you down. Right. So, taking off from his question, he was talking about revenue, making money out right. of what you have. Aren't you scared about, can you force yeah. the habit? I mean, I always think about Blackberry, and I remember the 10 years oh, yes. back when I went to New York. She's laughing, she thinks I'm of another vintage. <laughs> but, well, ten years back when I went to New York, I would look at the, you know, we'd do window shopping of Blackberries and saying this yeah. is this, you know, yeah. Star Trek device. And now Blackberries become redundant. Can you force the habit? Can you have a, a Twitter button on every phone so that you sort of force the habit so the next generation, which may be ten years from now, still has Twitter? Because you want to make it an experience that people live with. 
Yeah, I think you have to constantly cannibalize your existing value chain and be thinking about what's next, what's next, what's next, and be investing in that. Um, for example, um, because you mentioned earlier that one of the beauty beauties of Twitter is that it's real time. I yep. mean, our core characteristics are that we're public, real time, conversational, and then widely distributed. Yep. Tweets go everywhere. That real time nature will change and change and change and change change as technology gets more real time. So. We just acquired a company called Periscope that's literally live, no lag broadcasting. You pick up your phone, you press the broadcast button, and you can start broadcasting wow. to all of your followers right now what you're looking at. Wow. So imagine Ferguson in the US, uh, the plane in the Hudson, Occupy Central Video. in Hong Kong, anything being I'm live broadcasting what I'm seeing right now uh, to all of my followers. And they can type back at me and say, hey, point your phone over there to the left. I think that, you know. Um, even in beta, we've seen um, people be able to broadcast uh, neighborhood fires that are happening. Um, uh, one of the astronauts in the U.S. Uh, did a live Q&A on it. So I think that that live broadcasting with no lag of what I'm seeing right now with my uh, device is going to fundamentally change the platform again. It must be, you, know, it must, you must have to do a lot to stay ahead of the curve. Yeah. yeah, and then of course you don't always you can't guess keep right. Buying you know, companies, you, you have to you, do stuff yourself. Well, you, of course, you have to. You try things, you invest in them, you try different kinds of applications. We built a Twitter music app that we thought was, you know, our intuition was going to be, look, some of the biggest users on Twitter are musicians. It's going to fundamentally change the way people think about what kind of music to listen to, and it didn't. It didn't get a big following. But you try those things, and some work, and some don't. That's you have to keep trying them. Is, like, it, is it is it like a fail fast kind of? I mean, is that because I find everybody has to. Yes, but I would say one thing about fail fast. The, the challenge is when you're a startup you, and you have an idea you're passionate about, you have to make it work. If it doesn't work, if it doesn't work two weeks in, you have, to like, you have to figure out how to make it work. And you keep trying and keep trying and keep trying. I think that big companies can underinvest in things and if they don't grow to five million users in two weeks, they say, ah, it didn't work and let's move mm. on. And you have to be willing to say, this is important, we're gonna figure this out, we're gonna keep investing in this because we have to make it work. And the challenge then is distinguishing between when do you cut That's your losses and when do you no, So and 10 when you years from now, do you still see Twitter up there? Of course. Yeah? Yeah, of course, even more so. It's interesting because you know, basically, I don't know how many of you know this, but Twitter started out as alternative to SMS, mm -hmm. right? To messaging. This reason and look how it's grown. That's the reason it was 140 it is, characters. Yes, very was the interoperability. By the way, why 140 characters? characters? Was a technology? No, that's why it's not on. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, but why 140 characters? It was it was an it was a mobile network no. operator interoperability uh, thing between uh, carriers in the U.S. But like Verizon Dick, and Dick Rogers. Dick up. Give, got 160 why not, characters. Why not 500 characters? Well, now you can. The, the constraint is between op mobile operators for SMS and so forth is irrelevant to the platform anymore. So it's a legacy. It's a legacy constraint. Do you guys do do a, a new release every every two weeks? Is we it do a new release every two weeks. So there's the something new happening every two weeks. The platform's much more visual now, much more media centric. But you know what's happening because of this? Like after the acquisition of Wine, and now there's so many GIFs on Twitter. I, I almost worry for like third world nations where where the, uh, the like the bandwidth isn't strong. Like Twitter earlier used to be text, 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 text. Now it's, it's just moving images the whole, my whole timeline is that. Yeah. And I sometimes, my, like the, my data package is sometimes struggling to keep up with my timeline. Yeah. Is that not a worry for Twitter? Like if you're really looking to expand, yeah. uh, you, you need your third world countries to join in. You need everybody else to join in. Uh, yeah. And I feel like, like where Twitter's heading right now, it's so bandwidth heavy that it might leave a but lot of isn't countries. Isn't that a contradiction there? Because we have the worst bandwidth in India and we are also the highest consumers of video like yours. Yeah, yeah. So that's all, you know, it's also got to do with the newness of the medium, I think. Don't so you we have, have, so we have a team called... Huh? Consuming those videos on a very different platform. And a variety of the sketches that for the AIB puts out, for example, is laptops or computer-based like audience consumers. And the cell phone yeah. for full-time entertainment isn't quite as popular in India as it, it is abroad. You'd actually be surprised. 50% of all our views come on the phone now. On the phone. Yeah, but like yeah. 50 But that is, that is one specific video. Like but if you what are they connected Twitter, to? There are five of these. Yeah. No, but what are those phones connected to? That internet at their home yeah. or office. People using data on their mobile phones on the go. Not connected to you know Wi-Fi in general. For for them, bandwidth is a genuine but issue. I think, I think sorry. Go on, go on. Uh, the the earlier point that you made about live streaming as well, right through Periscope. 
Uh, I think Meerkat is another app that is just re released uh, recently that is also trying to do the same with Twitter, right? My only problem with this medium is that uh, when we talk about hashtag activism in India or even in any other third world country, if you're breaking news live and if you are in a situation where you are in a violent environment and you want to stream live, that is when you'll be using your data the most because you, won't, you might not have a Wi-Fi zone because that's what happens in a lot in third world countries. How will this server not fail at that point? That becomes like a bit of a task. Well, we have to both, we have to both move toward high bandwidth, new experiences like yeah. Periscope, and uh, make it easy for lightweight connections and low bandwidth environments to access Twitter data faster and faster all the time. So we have a team in our Seattle office, uh, an engineering team that's leading an effort we call Fastest App, that okay. we measure them based on the ability for low bandwidth, lightweight devices to connect to Twitter and get a full timeline as fast as possible in as light a way as possible. Why, so okay. that you, as you get into worse and worse connection zones, the app fails over to those. Now, why aren't you in China? Well, we're blocked in China. So uh, what are you doing about it? What am I doing about it? Yes, well, you're I don't, Chinese. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've taken a. You, this first time, I think, in maybe 16 years, someone's got me, asked me a question that I didn't quite know what the way, right way to answer it. Um, it's okay. I, I, I do it for I've a living. Taken a couple, I've taken. Uh, no, I've spent. I've spent. I've spent Good time point. in. Well, I'm I've going to make time, sure he takes the next flight. Yeah. Too. <laughs> I've spent some time in, in China, and the team has spent a bunch of time in China, um, talking to the um, appropriate folks there about um, about our platform and uh, developing a business in China. I think that. Um, it's likely the case that the way we develop our business in China is around some of our other services like Fabric, which is a, a software platform for helping people build apps. And we already have a number of app developers in China, some of the biggest in the world, using Fabric. And we'll probably enter the market that way. You know, I, can I give you an unsolicited bit of advice? <laughs> what you, you should tell the what, Chinese why, when yeah. you go there? Well, like everybody else does, why, don't, like, why, why should I stop well, you? Just, just to provoke the Chinese, you go and tell them, that this is another area where you're going to lose out to the Indians. <laughs> I'll take that under advisement. <laughs> They'll allow I'm Twitter. Right, but but, I'll, but I'll honestly, I'll Dick, honestly, I, I read an interview. I read an interview of yours where you said that you had gone to Shanghai. Yes, that's correct. And where there was a wall, where people had put out what they were saying with hashtags. That's correct. Wow. And I presume that hashtags, though, you know, are proprietary Twitter. Well, there used to be lots know, of other platforms so you're now. Not in, you're, not in, you're not yeah. in China, but people are putting hashtags on the wall. I think it's an expression that, you know. I would, I would say yeah. this, though. You no? know, uh, just because, so we are blocked in China. Um, however, uh, people in China, lots of them, use these virtual private networks um, <laughs> to access Twitter through, uh, to VPN access Twitter. VPN yeah. are actually yeah. very popular. Yeah. Like no, but don't you think, Rika, don't you think that, uh, that you know, essentially the job of social media is also to disrupt? You know, disrupt yeah. society. Yeah. Uh, disrupt, be, be a disruptive, positive disruptive force in democracy. That's right, to, or and and then, to organize. And that's yeah. happening in China. Like, very recently, this is very frivolous. But there was a BuzzFeed writer whose phone got lost and someone in China found yes, it. Yes, I heard and it. And was the putting up pictures of himself. And this BuzzFeed writer got so famous in China that thousands of Chinese people were getting sneaky ways to get on Twitter. So I think it's happening. The internet and all its goofy glory is, uh, you know, sort of equalizing the world, getting around blocks, the way that all of us in India stream Netflix, even though we're not supposed to <laughs> Thank you watch for Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones, yeah. Where's the closest police station? <laughs> we'll Tanmay, Tanmay, where is it? <laughs> That's your answer. I just have to go lose my phone. And <laughs> no, but do you think about it that way? You know, beyond, you see, there must be a, you know, there must be for you a larger role that you see for yourself and your company. Of they, course. So, you know, do you look about it like that? We all do our jobs, but we also think of different ways in which we impact the society that we are in. For example, Tanmay, Roshan, all of us in our own ways, uh, you know, impact the society we are in, hopefully in a positive way. Do you look upon your role and your company's role in that sense? 100%. What would you, how would you talk about it? And how would you I mean, we talk about it inside the company all the time. Yeah. Um, and our role in, um, you know, Twitter, because of, its ab uh, because of its ability to express an idea or a thought or an emotion, even a revolutionary idea, and have that spread around the world instantly. I mean, we saw things, we have seen things even recently, like in the aftermath of the Charlie Hebdo bombing in Paris, yes. uh, uh, a user on Twitter just posted an image that said, Je suis Charlie. And three days, four days later, Huge. that was a 
march through yeah. the streets of yeah. through the streets of Paris. So a simple uh, a photo on Twitter became a movement um, in a matter of in so a matter you turn of actually. I find that very interesting because you know when we look upon news and we pick up issues that we feel strongly about. Very often, we're not giving the news story out. We have a hashtag, does India care enough? And in that sense, the hashtag becomes a rallying ground. It becomes, it unifies people. That's right. And I think we need more of that in India. We need more of that globally. I agree with what you spoke about, Charlie. But, Do you want but, to talk about know, that? The, the, the other thing is, and this is something, so, so I'm going back to what Tanmay once said when he was talking about the videos. But I think that initially when I was online, my, I mean, when I was on Twitter, my reason was that I found like-minded people. I had great conversations. I found sets of people. Now. My timeline gets so crowded that half the time I'm missing out on things, and and I think that the, that now there is this whole thing. Like, I mean, every brand in India wants to train. So if you look at, I mean, you go to any brand manager because we do other work, and there's this woman saying, "How can I train?" So you know, I also feel that there's suddenly from a medium which which had so much importance to me in that sense as now that whole problem of YouTube that there's there's a million videos out of which only two make sense. How do you get rid of that on, on Twitter? Because now my news feed is filling. I'm trying very hard to filter it. I mean, how do I filter it? What are you doing for filtering? Because it's just, I mean, just go down your timeline. Yeah. And this is. We're <laughs> introducing capabilities yeah. like uh, something called while you were away. So if we were off the, yeah. if you're off Twitter yeah. for a number of hours, when you come back, we'll show you the top four or five things we think are most important to you. Right now, that only is if you're off for nine or ten hours. That time frame will start shrinking and shrinking. So that if you're gone for three hours and you missed a thousand, two thousand tweets. When you come back, you'll see here are the five that we think you really okay, should can, see. Can I, we've got a few minutes left, so I just want to put this around the table. Each of us can talk about the one hashtag or the issue that meant most to them on this meeting. And uh, if I can give myself the privilege of starting first. <laughs> uh, go ahead. <laughs> I told you you'll regret this. And then, we have, and then we should go around. So anyway, on a serious note, the one hashtag which mattered to me the most in my career has been the one on India against corruption. In, because our channel 2010 exposed six scams. By 2011, everybody in the country was talking about it. But it got that sort of, uh, it got the collective conscience of the country together when a group called India against corruption started a protest movement, non-political at that time. And across the country, I think the hashtag associated with India against corruption went viral. For me, personally, it told me a lot about how you can use social mediums to sort of bring about a larger change in society, put pressure on political forces. I think at that time, it was it had high impact. So for me, that was the biggest moment as far as social media is concerned. You want to take it around the table? Um, we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll yeah, go. Yeah, just just yeah. on the heels of exactly yeah, what you said, um, India with Pakistan, and the, as I mentioned in the aftermath of the uh, Peshawar yes. incident. Yeah. Um, we talked earlier about how that you get that direct connection on Twitter. There was a great example of Twitter bringing the sure. world closer and bringing people closer who, um, and being able to do actual, you know, real world benefit for those people there, Absolutely. organizing the blood drives and so yeah. forth. You want, to, you want to exchange any of your moments? We have five minutes left on this. I think uh, Jaswi Chali was, uh, was an important moment, uh, and which brings me to, the, to, to censorship, right? I mean, India is a country we're dealing with this issue right now. Uh, and sometimes I keep wondering about how cooperative is Twitter going to be? Like our government is super sensitive. At any point, uh, they could wake up and go like, hey, Twitter, and as we did recently, just called YouTube and said, you got to take this down. Uh, how cooperative uh, does Twitter plan to be or how cooperative is Twitter when it comes to censorship and dealing with governments who are pro-censorship? Yeah. You know? So we have a transparency report that we release every year that shows the number of requests we got from a government yeah. and which ones we re which ones we reacted to and which ones we And what we is the consi didn't. what 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 qualities are you looking at before you consider a censorship well, request? It, what I would say is we know that we have to abide by the rule of law in the countries in which we operate. I mean we have people on the ground here in India. I can't just say actually I think that your law is, doesn't make any sense so I'm not going to obey it. Yeah. We have to obey by the laws in the countries in which we operate. But if that means also we have to get an appropriate legal request. Some requests come in mm. that we don't believe are appropriate legal requests and we fight those. But you want to talk cool. about any of the moments yeah, that sure, matter sure. to you, Anmol? Like, I think the best thing that Twitter has done for people in my generation is provide us a way of showing sympathy. India with Pakistan, ride sure. with me in Australia after the Sydney attacks. Right. Yes. The, uh, things in Tunisia affected teenagers in India who thought about how governance can be changed with the Arab Spring. Yeah. Yeah. Movements are not just localized political events. Right. The sympathy yeah. no, flows yeah, in, yeah, yeah, yeah. support flows in, so donations flow in. Every local political movement is now has global repercussions because yeah. judgment and support and sympathy flows yes. in. And we owe this to Twitter in more ways than we yes, can actually absolutely. imagine. Right. 
Uh, yeah, I just want to sort of piggyback off what Anmol said. I was in New York during Occupy Wall Street, and it was just fascinating to see friends of mine, you know, actually push to action by just picking up their phones. Um, because a lot of times, I think we have this misconception that the internet is a completely distinct space from the real world, and you know, they don't really impact one another. Um, and for my generation, more than any other, that is completely untrue. untrue yeah. um, and it's fascinating to watch, you know a transition from a trending hashtag to 200 people standing physically in a park it, with signs up. We've it's seen up. this happen so often. Yeah. So often yeah. nowadays. Exactly. Uh, I read somewhere which said that today if Paul Revere was around, he wouldn't have to write, he'd just tweet. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and, I, and I sometimes really think, I mean, I'm fascinated by what's happening with the political scenario, with what, how ARP is doing stuff on it, how the political parties are, I mean, how people are handling it's it. Good. It's good, and I, and, I, and I genuinely feel that for all of us, uh, genuinely having conversations today has become really difficult at times, but you find your audience, you find a set of people, and that's what, what's there. Yeah. Hashtags, there are, there are plenty of. Yeah. I, I actually wanted, because you, know, you said, we said we, we just have a free wheeling chat. I, I did this, so, so when, when the iPhone 6 came out, I, I wrote to Tim Cook, and he didn't respond, so I said, can I get one? Because, <laughs> because he said, if anybody tweets right now, everybody was out there. Shameful so I, 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 no, no, I, I don't know, no, no, I wanted, I wanted to ask him, next, him. When I see him next, Please. I'll ask him for <laughs> one. But, but I, you know what I wanted to really <laughs> ask him, saying, what's the funniest tweets you get? What are the funniest tweets yeah. he must be getting? He must be getting he something some really ones. crazy. Well, don't you? He gets some, oh, I get some. Tech support. People tweet at me for tech support, for product ideas, for why I'm a moron, all sorts of things. We've really enjoyed this. Thanks enjoyed the me. chat. Hashtag thank you. I, uh, hashtag thank you. Hashtag thank you. <laughs> hashtag, <laughs> hashtag, hashtag I'll see you again. Hashtag. Awesome. Get Arnab on Twitter. Get Arnab on Twitter. Can we trend that yeah. word? Thank you, guys. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Thanks, it's everybody. wonderful to get out. Thank you. Wonderful thank you. people. Great chat. Thank you, Dick. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. So you have to come here so that you can oh. take a selfie. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. This is good. It's a selfie of Arnav taking a selfie. Ah, can you imagine?